Hey everybody. I'm sorry I'm a couple minutes late. Uh, duty called so I did not get a chance to do my lipstick and that's all right um, because it's real life. All right Keto Mary just popped on so let me get her on. Again, I apologize for being a few minutes late, everybody. Oh, did it. Oh, there we go. Hey, how are Hi. you? Hi. You made hey. it. <laughs> I did. I'm sorry I'm late. I looked at the time and I was like, oh, I'm going to be late. But I just wrapped up my notes. So I'm good to go. That's Indeed. okay. I heard you comment about the lipstick. I'm like, that's the only thing I, I ran and I like did my lipstick. <laughs> I just can't even see it. That's all. <laughs> when I get on live, that's pretty much all I do. I put on lipstick. I'm like, oh, I didn't get to put on my lipstick today, but eh. <laughs> oh well. That's all right. I've been. I wear a mask all day, so when you wear a mask all day, you don't really. You don't need lipstick, right? No. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need much of anything, pretty much. So, yes. Yeah, so I just wanted to um, introduce everyone to you, um, at least the people who are following on my page who may not be familiar um, with you, but. First, I just want to tell everyone, as always, even though I'm a doctor, I'm not your doctor, so this is not medical advice. We're talking in general. And if you are interested in anything that we talk about, make sure to um, consult your primary care physician. Also, I should note that uh, Diet Doctor has a list of low-carb physicians and physicians that are supportive of low-carb. So I would say if you are having trouble locating one in your area, that would be a good resource to, to find people who are open-minded to it. All right. I always get that little spill. But go ahead, and why don't you tell us about yourself and how you found low-carb keto and just kind of your story. Okay. Well, uh, my name is Mary Roberts, for those of you who don't know me. Um, I have been keto for over six years now. I had my six-year anniversary on March 3rd. Yay! Um, so, I mean, basically, I have had a lifelong dysfunctional relationship with food. It started when I was a, a preteen. Um, and I, the short, the short version is I, you know, discovered dieting in high school, went on, mm -hmm. went on my first diet, lost some weight. And then basically, that set the stage for, you know, up until I found keto six years ago. I was on and off, you know, countless diets. I tried everything. Um, those of you that are around my age may recognize, I, I tried Richard Simmons' deal a meal. Does anyone remember that? <laughs> um, I would eat, I would eat those like 100 calorie figurine bars, like from uh -huh. the 80s. Do you remember figurines? Um, so, I mean, I tried everything. Did Slim Fast, Benjamin, Weight Watchers. You know, I did like the Jenny Craig Nutrisystem stuff. Like I tried everything. Mm -hmm. um, and, and then most of the time what I did was count calories. Like I thought like counting calories was the be all end all and I would do that. Um, and then in, I, I want to say about eight, nine years ago, I had a friend tell me about Atkins and I had mm -hmm. heard of Atkins, but like, you know, stereotypical, all I knew was like, oh, it's like bacon and he died of a heart attack, which is not true by the way. Right. Um, but that's what I knew. Right? I knew right. that. Uh, but she told me about it. And I thought, oh, okay, well, I'll give it a try. Because if you go to their website, they'll send you this little free starter kit thing. So mm -hmm. that was my introduction to low carb. I knew that I had a problem with carbohydrates because I you know, binger, you know, lifelong binger, compulsive over mm -hmm. here, addicted to food and sugar. Um, my uh, junior year in high school, I was hospitalized for bulimia. So I tried that too. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so I, I've just had this lifelong battle with with food and mainly carbs. Um, mm -hmm. So I tried Atkins, I lost about 40 pounds, I needed, okay. to lose, I needed to lose 100 pounds, I lost about 40 pounds. And then I got stuck and I gave up and I gained it back and then some and then mm -hmm. I went, you know, back to my usual of, you know, binging and dieting, binging and dieting. And then I tried Atkins a second time, same okay. thing, lost 40 pounds, gained it back and then some. Right. So, uh, so March of, of 2014 rolls around and I don't know what was different. Um, 
but I woke up, you know, one morning, the, the night before it was my husband's birthday and we had celebrated with a homemade cake that I made and mm -hmm. ice cream and everybody went to bed. I binged on the cake and ice cream mm -hmm. and I woke up the next morning and I felt terrible, of course, mm -hmm. um, physically and full of regret because <laughs> that's what we do. Right. And I stepped on the scale and I was 260 pounds. And I remember being devastated by that and thinking, oh my gosh, I'm only 40 pounds away from being 300 pounds. Like I had that <laughs> thought like, oh my gosh, I'm almost 300 pounds. Mm -hmm. And, um, and my blood sugar was over 200. My blood sugar was probably close to my weight. It was, you know, well into the, the 200s. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I did, I was diagnosed with type two diabetes in 2008. So I had diabetes, I had high blood pressure, I had asthma, I had allergies, mm -hmm. I had sleep apnea, I snored, um, I had all these, you know, issues. Mm -hmm. And so I just remember that, that morning being, you know, just devastated. So I thought, okay, that's it. I'm gonna start Atkins again. So I started Atkins that morning, mm -hmm. that day. And then a few days later, um, I was, we got together with friends and one of my, and he, one of my friends, and I told him I was doing Atkins again. And he's, and mm -hmm. so this is my friend, Brian, who, um, he's the one that started Keto Evangelist. Um, and he said, don't, don't do Atkins, do Keto. And he's, for people that know him, he has a very like dry sense of humor and like, we have a hard time like telling like I have a hard time like telling when he's serious or not and now I know but like back then I he I, I he says do keto and I said what what is that I had never heard of keto and mm -hmm. he starts telling me it's a really high fat diet and like you can eat bacon and like he's telling me like what I can eat and so I start laughing I'm like what I'm trying to lose weight Brian like, what right. are you telling me to do and <laughs> He convinced me finally, he's like, no, I'm serious. But so do I, it. You know, I did what we all do, right? I went to Google, which at that time, there really wasn't much, you right. know. Um, the only thing I, I could find was Keto Clarity. You know, I ordered Keto Clarity by Jimmy mm -hmm. Moore. Yeah. I read that. That was like my introduction. So that day when he told me from that point on, I've been keto. And so I think, you know, people always ask me, well, what made the difference this time? You know, like how... How, how how did you stay motivated? How did how did you stick to it? And really, the difference was it was the first time, and I really believe it was because I was eating keto because it was the first time ever in my life being on a diet that didn't uh -huh. feel like I was on a diet. Like I right. felt satisfied. I was not suffering from hunger, and the mm -hmm. weight was just like coming off, and and I felt so good. Like mm -hmm. everything, like counting calories and losing weight before um it never stuck and never worked because it was so unsustainable and it was so hard mm -hmm. and i would like be using sheer willpower and white knuckling it like to get you know make my way through this diet and i could never see it to completion i was never able to lose more than 40 pounds at a time so it seemed mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. you know it's you know I always thought it was going to be impossible to ever re reach a goal, but with keto I did. It took me 22 months to lose 106 pounds, so it wasn't like speedy because um, it, it. Oh, 22 months to to lose the 106 pounds, and then I've been maintaining since then like give or take a few pounds. I'm going I'm perimenopause right now, so <laughs> it's a little more challenging. But that's, yeah. you know, but I, I mean, that's it. Like I, you know, I finally found something that worked and didn't feel like torture. Well, and I think there's several points that I kind of want to dissect because you said you gave so much, um, I think, incredible information and you kind of addressed some of the stereotypes just through talking um, through your story. I think one of the things I'll hear people say when they're contemplating low carb or keto, um, a lot of people say, well, you know, why are you doing that? It's not sustainable. And whenever I read the articles, um, or I should say, you know, the quick news articles, right, that will be on CNN or whatever, and they're mm -hmm. like, you know, they'll rank the top diets and, and the worst diets, and they mm -hmm. always put keto 
as the, you know, one of the worst, right? One of the worst top five diets or whatever. And it's all just based, most of it is based on expert opinion. Um, right. But one of the critiques that they always say is that it's not sustainable. But I'll meet people, whether it's in clinic or through, um, you know, social media, you know, how I found your page. Um, but I'll meet people all of the time who talk about they have been keto for years or they've mm -hmm. been low carb for years. And so right. um, I, it, it can be sustainable. I think you just have to, like with whatever lifestyle anyone is choosing to follow, I think you have to make it work for you. Mm -hmm. It is physically so, sustainable. People, the when it's not sustainable, it's because it's up here. Because they can't let go okay. of their addiction to carbohydrates. They can't hit your life without certain things. And they have an emotional mm -hmm. attachment to food. So people that, that have tried it and said, you know, oh, it wasn't sustainable for me, it's because they didn't fix their relationship with food. Because physically, it's mm -hmm. very satisfying. It's nutrient-dense. It's very satisfying. There's no reason for it to not be sustainable. Okay. That's a good point. And then the other thing you mentioned was that you lost um, 106 pounds and that uh, was over 22 months. And I think mm -hmm. what I'll also see, at least what I run into, and you tell me what you run into, but um, if people will see kind of these amazing weight loss stories where like in six months, someone lost like 80 pounds or you know, whatever, in under a year, someone has lost blah. And they don't realize that um, for most people, the weight loss process and the body transformation and the recomposing of like your body tissue, you know, redistribution of fat and all of that, that's a process over time. Right. And I think a lot of people get frustrated because they'll see people who've lost lots of weight and they think it's overnight and that's just for most people that's not the case yeah yeah well and i think you know it's interesting because there are definitely stories out there like that where someone will post a picture mm -hmm. you know the before and after picture and they're like i lost 100 pounds in nine months and i'm like right. oh my god you know every, everybody freaks out and they want to know what are you mm -hmm. eating what do you do you know all the the questions but I think for a lot of those people, and men especially, I think there's men tend to lose really fast. And I think the difference is, is that women tend to be like we tend, I was a chronic dieter. We tend to be chronic dieters. We go, you know, we've been on all sorts of diets. And men don't like they don't do like men don't chronically diet so then they start a diet right. and they you know like you'll see like the husband and wife started together and it's always the same story the wife's like i've only lost 15 pounds and my husband's lost 60 because right. it's the first diet he's ever been on he's not like metabolically screwed up like the wife right you know so that's right like, like one one difference and then other times you know when people have they've lost a lot of weight they're they are you know I love keto, but the downside to keto is that it's so satisfying that people chronically undereat. So some people are severely mm -hmm. under eating and they just drop the weight, you know, re really quickly. Um, or they haven't been a chronic dieter, so it works faster for them. Um, but I think most of us are probably chronic dieters and it takes a little longer and we have a lot of healing go that needs to happen and we're severely insulin resistant and, you know, all these things have to take place in order for the weight to come off. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I think a lot of that too is when you're just used to kind of the standard American diet full of processed foods, processed sugars, you know, mm -hmm. it's really about you know, cleaning up your diet in terms of really reaching for real food, right. you know, real products rather than things that are made um, in a lab. And so I think it's sometime for a lot of people, it's the first time they've really been giving their body kind of that input or the building yeah. blocks mm -hmm. rather than kind of a lot of Franken foods. You yeah, know, or things, mm -hmm. things created. And so I think people really underestimate and undervalue. Um, 
I feel like people think it's hokey when people talk about eat real foods, but I mean, it's mm -hmm. true. I mean, that's it what is the true. body knows what to do with, right? I mean, we didn't evolve with a bunch of chemicals and, exactly. and all these different things. I mean, people were living off the land, how ha you know, however was conducive to their specific geographic region. But the common theme is that people were living off the land, right? Or living off of what the land produced. And so um, I think we've just gotten away from that. And it's kind of, it's pretty amazing though, how when you give the body what it was designed to actually have, how quickly the body can kind of get back to baseline and self-heal and reverse some of these conditions that for a long time, we've told people, you know, they're just chronic and it just, it's a part of life, right? You right, know, because like you, you get old, you, like people will do that, like, oh, this is just a part of aging. You know, you start falling apart when you get older, but that's not the way it's supposed to be at all. Right, right. And so a lot of that is just kind of how are you taking care of yourself and kind of what are you, um, you know, giving your body for input. Um, now, someone did ask a question. Let me scroll back up. Um, Chiva uh, Ruiz asked, I have a question. Um, do you eat carbs sometimes, given that you're keto? Um, well, I don't eat sugar or grains. So I do eat carbs, but not what we would call, you know, non-keto. Like, I, I know there's debate in the, in the keto space about that. You know, some people think that you know, you can eat whatever as long as it fits your macros. I am not in that camp. I'm a firm believer that ingredients yes. matter. Yeah, I heard that only phrase. real food, but I, I avoid sugar. I avoid grains. Um, I don't really like, I, there's only one thing I eat that contains sweetener and it's so high fat that it doesn't compel me to eat more. So I, I basically, I mm -hmm. stay away from like making keto desserts. I don't drink anything sweet. Um, and I only eat, I only eat real food. And, and I, the last couple of years, I am mostly carnivore. I can't, I can't say I'm strict carnivore, but I am mostly carnivore. I eat very few plant foods. Um, mm -hmm. So I eat, mo you know, mostly meat, but um, yeah. Okay. And then um, for me, I'm kind of a hybrid. So I guess if you had to, like, if you had to label, um, how I eat it is lower carb um I tend to eat a lot of plant foods um because I'm, I'm like a really huge gardener I just I love to garden and so I I'm like not I domestic can, at all <laughs> yeah, so I I feel like if I grow um if I grow it then I'm allowed to eat it <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, that's what I tell people, you know, real food, it comes from the animal and the earth. If it came out of a factory, you know, don't, don't eat it. And that's kind of controversial in the keto space because there's tons of products available and, you know, some of them are great and people can handle them. I just typically avoid stuff like that. Even if it's, you know, if it's something that says keto on the label, if it's processed and it has like a ton of ingredients or it's, you know, a, a like a, you know, like there's a million different keto cookies, things like that. I just avoid that stuff because it just, it has the same effect on me that like a regular cookie has, you know, we eat a cookie, the sweet taste hits and it, you know, turns my, my brain on. And then all I want is, you know, more, more cookies. So I just avoid that kind of stuff. But yeah, if it's comes from the animal or the earth, then, then eat it. And, you know, I know a lot of people like vegetables and like to eat. I don't like vegetables. I've never liked them. I always feel like they're like a punishment. <laughs> like they're a diet. Food. Like I put them in like the diet food category because I, my entire life, I would gag down vegetables because I'm like, oh, these are so healthy. Um, but I hated them. So there's very, I, okay. I do, there's certain things I do like that I'll occasionally have. Like, you know, and I like Cobb salad. I love avocado. Um, mm -hmm. but I, otherwise I'm like not a big plant food eater. I really like enjoy meat. It satiates me more and helps me. It just, I feel more satisfied, but, um, but yeah, real food. That's really, you know, you don't even necessarily have to be keto. I, I do right. think we're supposed to be low carb. I was, I can't remember where I heard it the other, I was talking to a client about it today, but I heard it on a podcast or was reading and somebody was talking about how like, you know, when we're, when we reach the point in our life where we become overweight, 
that that means we have already met our lifelong quota for carbohydrates. Like from hmm. that point on, like we're not so, like you're done with carbs. <laughs> if you become overweight, you're done with carbs. Um, and you know, and sometimes like we have, we see a lot of childhood obesity. So they've eaten so many carbs yeah. that they're overweight still, you know, as a child. So the body can only handle so many. And, you know, so then you see, that's why you see some people who they don't, they don't ever become like binge eaters or they don't eat excessively, mm -hmm. but may, by, by the time they're in their forties and fifties, they start to get the belly fat, you know, the weight starts to come on. And it's mm -hmm. because we have met our carbohydrate quota mm -hmm. and now it's time to like cut them down. So I thought that was pretty interesting. Hmm. I had not, I had not heard that theory. I think you know, especially when we talk about childhood obesity, I think that a lot of the issue, um, I mean, I'll see, and I try not to look at what other people feed their children, because I'm like, that's your child, and in my house, we'll do what we do in our house. But like, I notice a very stark difference <laughs> between how my children eat, and how <laughs> like, a lot of their friends eat in yeah. terms of lots of packaged foods, lots of sugary foods, yeah, the lots of things that are just processed. And so the thing is, it's like, I know we don't like to label food good or bad. Um, and someone asked me one time, they were like, well, your kids probably don't eat any carbs. I'm like, no, that's not true. My kids do. But again, their carbs aren't coming out of package. Right. They're it's not ingredient carbs. carbs. <laughs> right. It's not. I was like, you know, it's single ingredient foods. Um, we do a lot of things when they're in season, when they're not in season, then we cut back on them. We cycle, you know, yeah. stuff like that. But it, um, it's, it's not as simple, at least to me, I don't think it's as simple as saying, um, you know, like all carbs are bad per se. I definitely think that there are, and everyone's body is unique, right? I mean, there's people right. who have nightshade sensitivities who have, there's all different things. Like you have to look at your personal situation and how food right. The unequal one is all that matters. Right, right. Um, but I definitely think that no matter what kind of dietary camp you're in, I think people should be able to get behind eating real foods. And Absolutely. then it's up to you to decide like what the real food is that you want to eat. But I think right. at a baseline, we should be really trying to get away from things that are packaged. Um, that's, I mean, that's, that's my opinion. I 100% agree. Yeah. I think that the processed food industry is terrible. <laughs> like yes. it's not, it's, I put it in the, that, like, there's real food that comes from the animal and the earth, and then there's fake food, like, that right. comes from a factory. Like, all this, the majority of the stuff in the grocery store is not real food. It's not, I wouldn't categorize it, categorize it as food. It's, like, food-like products. <laughs> Correct. Right. And yeah. our body just doesn't really thrive on too many food-like products. Mm -hmm. So, um, there was a question. This is from sports doctor Nancy. She says she wonders um, how you get antioxidants without plants. Um, so that just because, okay, so there's plants contain a lot of like a lot of stuff, but that doesn't mean it that they are bioavailable to the human body. Like I, um, I think, you know, meat is more bioavailable and there's plenty of, you know, nutrients and vitamins in, in meat. So I don't, I'm not in the camp that believes that we have to have, that we have to have plants to get certain things because just because the plant contains them doesn't mean that our body's going to absorb them. You know, plants mm -hmm. have lots of anti-nutrients too. Like, so what are we, you know, there's like all kinds of different ways, you know, to, to look at that, but, um, I'm not concerned about that. Okay. Um, and there was a story I was looking at. So this is the thing too, like, I know people are, I know what the, the natural reflexes, the natural reflex answer is, and I guess I tend to kind of look more at like what your vital signs are, what your health markers are, et cetera. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to have a lot of studies, right? That show people who are doing low carb, right. uh, mainly animal based, whether you want to call it car carnivore, zero carb, like whatever you want to call it. Yeah. We're not going to have studies that show those people 
versus people who are having meat plus lots of other sugary foods, right? right? That combination. Yeah. Plus people do you know what I mean comparing those who then just eat only carbs but are natural carbs like plants so right when we're looking at a lot of this data they're comparing people to um they're basically lumping people in who eat meat with people who also eat a lot of processed sugary food right and I think the two together is probably yes very damaging right but if you're removing the sugar aspect and you're eating nose to tail i know everyone doesn't eat nose to tail but in theory you know if you're gonna eat you know like your livers and your heart yeah. and your I tongue love pizza. i'm weird <laughs> I, oh i made um we made uh anti churros last night and the kids like tore it up completely and they were so good um yeah. so but you know you have to look at there's something called it's a uh, glycolipotoxicity and so people always like to jump on the fat part of the glycolipotoxicity glyco and saying, like, well, that came from the fat or the high fat foods or the processed animal foods or blah, blah, blah. But you forget the glyco part too, where it's also at high levels, glucose is toxic. So remove right. one of those. And I think that's why biologically you'll see people who thrive on plant-based diets. I mean, th there are people who definitely thrive on plant-based diets. Their diet is very low in fat, though, high in carbohydrates. Mm -hmm. Or you'll have the people who are lower carbohydrate or moderate carb or zero carb. Well, what's the difference there? Yes, their fat intake may be high, but now they have taken away the glucose. The problem becomes when you mix both together all the time at high levels and then with the processed things um, yeah. because you have data that actually, and I know people, you know, start to roll their eyes because right now plant-based is a thing, but there is lots of scientific data actually that does support the health, safety, and efficacy of low carbohydrate diets. So right. I think people have to get out of their heads just because one lifestyle works doesn't mean other lifestyles don't work either. Right. I mean, the common theme all of these have is that you're eating real foods. And so that's why I say it's really up to the individual to decide which real food diet right. works Well, and your body will and, decide and for that. you, you know. Right, People, right. You're, it depends on your level of, of metabolic damage. You know, some people mm -hmm. are severely metabolically damaged and, and they, have to, they have to do, you know, I, I hate to use the word extreme because I don't believe it's extreme, but just for the sake of the conversation, they have to be as extreme as keto, keeping it 20 grams of carbs or, mm -hmm. or less per day because they are so severely insulin resistant and they have to incorporate the fasting, which we haven't talked about yet, but that's fabulous. You know, in, incorporating the fasting along with the low carb, you're really going to improve your insulin sensitivity there. And so mm -hmm. your, your insulin will come down, your blood sugar will come down and um, you know, and then other people can get away with, you know, my husband can eat a lot more carbs than I can. And, mm -hmm. you know, nothing happens to him. He maintains normal blood sugar. He, you know, has single digit body fat year round mm -hmm. He's a bodybuilder, but like, you know, he, he can, he can eat a completely different way and thrive where if right. I were to eat like he ate, I would not thrive, you know? So right. I always tell people the only Thing that matters is what your results are. Um, you know, people will ask me, I get asked a lot, like, well, what do you eat? What was your food plan? What is it? And it really doesn't matter what I did. It, you have to look at your, you know, yourself and anecdotal evidence is still evidence. So even if you can't find a study that says, you know, this is a great idea, if you do it and you get well, if your A1C comes down, if your insulin comes down, if your fatty liver goes away, if your sleep apnea goes away, if your blood pressure right. normalizes, then what you're doing is healthy and works for you. It doesn't matter if Susie Q next door didn't get the same results. That doesn't mean it's bad. You have to like, look at what does it do for you? N equals one. Right. That's all that matters. I mean, because every, like we see, you know, I mean, I see people all the time that they're eating a lot of, you know, they're, they're low carb, but it's all like Atkins bars and Atkins frozen meals, right? And all these and other stuff. And they've lost weight. They've lost weight, you know, and, and maybe some of their health markers improve, but 
where did they start? You know, it mattered the, who the individual is. It matters. Well, and I think then you just addressed uh, Mela Meadow Lark had a question, but you kind of already addressed it, but I'll just read it. Um, said, how can it be healthy to eat only or mostly meat? We are omnivores. Isn't lots of meat damaging to the body? And I think you kind of answered that. It just depends. Yeah, just you Well, to I mean, there's a lot something. of a lot of dietary dogma out there. Like we are like this is, you know, when I had to change my paradigm when I started this journey because I all of a sudden was getting results by doing all the things that were supposedly horrible and against the mainstream. Um, so, you know, I switched from eating low fat to eating high fat, mostly saturated fat. I lost 106 pounds eating 80 to 85 percent of my calories from fat, mostly mm -hmm. saturated fat. Um, my, my A1C went from being nine something to now I maintain a 4.9 A1, A1C. I have wow. normal blood pressure. I got off blood pressure meds. Um, so this idea that like an all meat diet is, is bad. I mean, it, it, it basically is dogma. We evolved as humans on mostly meat. Plants mm -hmm. were a supplement <laughs> you know like mm -hmm. they were seasonally available it, no you know the only here like you know in modern life can we go into the you know we go into the grocery store and we can get produce year round even when it's not in, in season and it yeah. doesn't even remotely resemble what it does in you know out in nature and what mm -hmm. our ancestors came across you know so we survived and our brains developed on, on, on eating meat. And all the studies that say that meat causes cancer and it does all these bad things, uh, you alluded to it earlier, these studies are done on people who eat meat and bread and rice and they maybe they smoke, we don't know. Like there's, they're doing, right. all, and they're eating lots of sugar. They have donuts on Sunday morning, they eat cereal, but it's the meat obviously that's been that you know I mean it just doesn't compute so but you know I so I you know my cholesterol is my triglycerides are consistently between 45 and 60 you know my HDL is around 80 um I mean it could I could have that could afford to you know go up a little bit but my all my health markers are good but if I were to uh, listen to what, you know, all the people in the know or the experts of people, have, you know, that have historically failed me in, with my health. Uh, like if I had listened to my doctor, I'd still be obese and sick and on medication right. and maybe even dead. Maybe I'd have had a stroke or a heart attack by now at, at age 48. I don't know. But, mm -hmm. if, but all I know is that when I went against the grain and let go of the diet dogma and did and just trusted the information I was getting from other people who experienced the same thing that, um, you know, I, I got the results and, and I feel better, look better and I'm healthier than I've ever been. So I, I can't agree that, you know, with all the like general statements about, you know, meat is bad. You, you have to have some carbs you have, like, I don't, I've had plenty of zero carb days and I've not dropped dead. Right, right. No, and again, I think it just goes back to um, people choosing something that works for them. And yeah. if your health markers are improving, and all of the health markers that we say will get worse, but for whatever you're doing, if it's if that's working, um, obviously, assuming you're consuming food properly, et cetera, et cetera. But right. um, you know, then I, I really think that it would be a shame for you just to stop and change your lifestyle just because someone else says popular, you know, that's not what right. you should be doing. If yeah. your hemoglobin A1C is now 4.9 or in the fours, but it used to be nine, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Or it used to be on a bunch of medications and now you're on zero. Like yeah. that just wouldn't make sense to, to go back and do that. Um, right. Project Paula asks, any tips for better digestion while on keto? Do you, have you ever had any digestive problems? I have not. Um, but this is a very common question. I, or it, I'm going to make the assumption when she talks about digestion that she's talking about 
um, bowel movements. Like that usually seems to be like, that's the problem. People are like, how do you go? Um, right. There's a couple, a couple things. First of all, when you, so let's talk about what it actually means. Like, you know, waste is, you know, when we go to the bathroom, that is the part of the food that the body doesn't use, that the body can't use, that it doesn't need. So mm -hmm. if you are going every day, multiple times a day, you have a terrible diet. Like you need to eat more, you know, you need to focus on more real food and food that the body can absorb and, and use. So when you're eating only real food, you, your body's using more of what you're eating. When you're eating real food and you're eating, you know, healthy fats, you feel more satiated. So you're probably eating less. So between the combination of eating real food and eating less, you are going to go less because you have less waste. Um, when you are eating an extremely, you know, when you eat a high carbohydrate diet and you're eating mostly processed food and you're going all the time, you, your, what, it, your body doesn't need that. Like that's, it's unnecessary to, you know, but I know there's again, dogma out there about you have to go every, it's unhealthy if you don't go every day. Well, why, why are, you know, who says that we have to put stuff into our body just to give it the chance to reject it? Hmm. You know, that's interesting. So I never really thought about it like that, but I, um, I don't know if you saw like on my stories and periodically I post pictures of my uh, family, but we have a new six month old, we have a new baby, um, just had a baby in October. And so he is, um, and it's been a while, like we have a big gap. Our next oldest child is um, about to turn six. So it's been a little bit since we've had a newborn in the home. Um, but Wyatt is exclusively breastfed. And I remember probably, when he was about one and a half to two months old, being really worried and calling the pediatrician. And I'm like, he only has a bowel movement like every seven to 10 days. Like, is he constipated? I thought breastfed babies weren't supposed to get constipated. Like, why is he not? Formula going? babies get constipated. But, <laughs> right, right. And so, but I was like, but why is he not having, because I had in my mind, like, he's eating breast milk, like he shouldn't be constipated. So why is he not going? And that's what the pediatrician said to me. She was like, he is probably using almost every ounce of the breast milk that you're giving him yeah. for fuel. He doesn't have much waste. She said, it's actually perfectly, and I just forgot all this. She was like, it's perfectly normal that some breastfed babies may only have a bowel movement once every two weeks. And right. I was like, really what i forgot i'm like are you sure she's like yes she was like if you are exclusively breastfeeding because they're using so much of it and so i guess i never really thought about that though again in terms of the adult form right yeah. that if we are using a lot or most of our energy for fuel and we don't have a lot of excess waste maybe that doesn't mean we always jump to constipation, but, but maybe you really aren't constipated. Right. Well, and that people also don't, a lot of people I notice don't understand what constipation is like constipation doesn't well, mean you're too. not going. You're constipated if you have to go, but you can't, you can't go because it's so large, hard and painful to go. That's mm -hmm. constant, mm -hmm. where you're experiencing pain. If you're just right. not going and you have no discomfort, you're not bloated. And when you go, it's normal. Um, right. There's the, nothing wrong with that. The, I'm glad you mentioned the newborn thing, though, because the other interesting thing about babies, because the other big argument that people like it w about the digestion thing is that we need fiber. We must have fiber to go poop. Oh, but yeah. Babies don't get fiber. Breastfed babies aren't getting fiber, and they still go to the bathroom. That's true. That is true. I do not think there's a lot of fiber in my breast milk. It's probably zero. No. <laughs> so <laughs> there yeah. is probably actually there's a lot none. of yes, there's and a then, lot of fat in breast milk. <laughs> there's a ton. Yes, my ma Yes, yeah. he, he's getting a lot of fatty milk there. Um, and the other thing too that just brings comes to mind is that he actually now does go a little more, like probably every one to three days now he poops Sorry, i'm talking about my baby's poop but um <laughs> now that we started 
<laughs> now that we've started solid foods, but again, you know, some of that is probably because he's getting more solid food. You know, it's right. so hard to gauge with babies, right? It's, he's it's, eating so more. he's probably getting, he's eating more and he's probably right. has more leftover waste, right? Than what he may need, which is why now we're seeing him go more frequently. Mm -hmm. um, whereas before when he was solely, you know, milk, um, he could go up to two weeks and not have a bowel movement and just be as happy as could be. But I mean, for me, I was like, ah, and right. We worry about like, it right, because, okay. yeah, yeah, because we're, we, we spend our entire life hearing all these things like repeatedly and we, you know, we take them in as gospel. And then when we experience different, we we're able to like question, is that really, tr is what I was told or taught? Is that even true? You know, like mm -hmm. I think a lot of us have mm -hmm. experiences and we can say, well, for me, that's not true. Right. And, you know, and then I'm scrolling through because I want to get to a few more questions if anyone has some um, before we uh, get off. But I think the thing is, again, I see a couple more comments about, you know, people have eaten plants for centuries. So, and I, and again, I don't think we're saying that you can't eat plants. And as I said earlier in the- No, if you we like them, earlier, eat them. I'm just saying, I, yeah, if them, you don't exactly. enjoy them, you don't have to eat them. <laughs> right. And, and for people who are joining later, um, we talked about earlier, or if you go to my stories, I'm like a huge gardener. I help to, you know, run our church. I co-run um, with one of our other church members, our community garden that we uh, started in an urban area to teach people more about um, in urban areas, how you can grow your own food and you can have access to quality food that you yeah. can grow yourself. And that actually, you don't have to rely on the food system. So I'm going right. way radical there. But anyway, no, that's <laughs> awesome. but, but, that is, yeah. but you know what I mean? You can you can grow your own like we don't need to be dependent on big industry really for anything. Right. right. So right. Um, it's nobody's saying that plants are bad. However, I think what I try to do when I work with people who are coming to me for weight loss, whether it's through coaching or through the office setting, I try to see what are they doing, what works for them, what is sustainable. So I have a lot right. of people who are plant-based or vegan, and I'll hear other people say, well, there's no way I could be plant-based because they eat out all the time. I'm like, okay, but if they went plant-based and their diabetes resolved and they're happy and they're feeling good, do it. Right. And I, but I also think it is the same for people who are either low carb or keto or even carnivore. Again, if I'm looking at the patient in front of me and before they had horribly controlled diabetes and now it's controlled or before they had a horribly controlled chronic hypertension and now they're on zero meds or if they were 300 pounds, you know, and now they're 200 pounds, like I'm not going right. to... I don't know. I'm not going to scold you. <laughs> right. You, it's not, it's you've gotten not healthy, one size fits all. And there, yeah, you know, there it's are like, lots well, of things that work for different people. Yeah. Right. And so I think we have to get out of this, um, I don't know, this dogma that there is only one way. And because right. there's evidence for one lifestyle negates the fact that there are people all over the world who have success by doing different things. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely, there's definitely um, splits like in, in the diet community, you know, there's people, they, people believe strong. It's very controversial. It's like politics. People be believe very strongly about, you sure. know, there's, there's no there's crossover about the food. Yeah. Um, and I, I'm like, I'm like, you know what, if it works, like I, you know, I personally don't eat a lot of plants. But I mean, I'm not against them. I'm not against e eating them. And if people enjoy them and they thrive, then have at it. Um, I just get like, if there's, you know, I get, I get the same questions over and over. Well, what about this? You know, what about your, what about your cholesterol? What about your colon? What about, you know, like, where, how do you get vitamin? You know, all these, you know, questions. And it's like, I don't know how many times I can say it, you know, I'll like, you know, a couple times a year post my, my blood work, like on, on my social media, because, 
you know, people ask about it, like, mm -hmm. okay, here it is, I get it done, like two, three times a year, staying on top of it, nothing bad is happening to me, I'm thriving. So let's not worry, you know, worry about what I'm what I'm eating or, or not eating, because whatever I'm doing is working. And I think it should be that way for everybody. Mm -hmm. There's there's definitely not one one size fits all, and it depends on the person, what their goals are, what their lifestyle is like. Um, I personally am a lifelong plant killer. <laughs> like I cannot keep plants alive. Uh, my husband had a beautiful garden, and I wasn't even allowed to like go out there. <laughs> it's like you're gonna jinx it. <laughs> well. <laughs> It happened. I mean, I, I think just, you know, in summary for people, I think that um, one, I think our biggest take home is what we're telling people is that, you know, be open minded, find what works for you. Um, if you have tried, um, I don't know, I think, again, no matter what camp you're in, I hope we can agree that the standard American diet is not a good diet. No, um, it's not. <laughs> and I, I think that anyone can agree with that. And I will even go out on a further limb and say, even if you're on the standard American diet, but you're counting calories, that's still not, it's still the same thing. Like the, as right. long as your basis is the standard American diet, whether you do portion control with the standard American diet, I mean, you're still getting lots of anti, you're still getting lots of inflammatories you know, inflammatory omega-6s and processed mm -hmm. foods and all of that. And so the more that we can um, adapt a whole foods diet, and obviously I'm a huge proponent of intermittent fasting, and maybe we'll have to yes. do this again and talk about how fasting kind of fits into all of it. Um, but I mean, I think those are going to be some of your greatest tools for health. Mm -hmm. um, and then as you're feeling better, you'll want to move more. And while a lot of people, um, and honestly, you'll hear lots of people say this, and it's exercise is not necessarily the one determinant, whether you lose weight or not, but there are definitely reasons to move your body just for general health reasons, to keep your bone health strong, all of these different things, mental health. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's kind of taking a whole body approach. And so you really have to kind of address different things. You know, fasting will address certain issues. Your nutrition addresses others. Getting de-stressing, getting outside, being just, you know, bright lights, get that vitamin D. Yes. All of sunlight. That's another thing we're sunlight. told is bad. Sunlight, you know, stay out of the sun, use sunscreen. But we need to be in, in the sun. Like, we don't need to go get sunburned, but we do need to spend time right. in the sun. So it's the greatest source of vitamin D rather than taking mm -hmm. a pill. Right. Just go out right. in the sun a little bit every day. <laughs> exactly. And so I think that's what I want people to kind of, you know, take home from all of this um, is that, one, just be open-minded. Again, you know, it's like, oh, that doesn't work. Well, you know, again, I not going to tell somebody who's sitting in front of me and if their if their lab work and their vital signs are improving you know i'm i'm not going to be right. i'm not going to scold you right. you know just because it doesn't work for me um doesn't mean it doesn't work for someone else and so i think we really have to if anything we have to hopefully be a little more open-minded just to different people in general and different lifestyles and ways of yeah. life. I think that really is the key and don't knock it. You may knock something for so long and not have success and realize if you just open your mind to a different perspective, maybe that's what you were in need of to jumpstart your own success story. So, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Well, thank you so much for coming on. I'm going to... Thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, no, thank you. I appreciate you taking time to come and chat. And um, like I said, I think, especially with the quarantine and go things going on, um, I think people are kind of looking, you know, looking for different things. I'm like, well, this is a perfect time to kind of reevaluate different ways of eating and seeing if there's any changes you can make before being kind of thrust back out there into, you know, society yeah. where you're back in the office and you have all the pressures of people like, 
you know, you know how the office can be. <laughs> Right. Especially well, I mean, trying it's, to get it's definitely too. right now is like an extreme time of stress for a lot of people and, and people turn to food during during that time. You right. know, it's, and it's it's too bad because like right now with, with everything that's going on, all the more reason for you to, you know, pay attention to your nutrition. Like I think, you know, mm -hmm. e eating healthy is going to make a, a, a huge difference in, in how susceptible we are to, like, getting sick, you know? Right. And so it's, like, right. a bad time to, like, be off the rails right now. Like, there's no better right. time to, like, improve your, your diet than now. Right. Correct. And especially when I hear people talking about, well, when COVID's over, I mean, I have... I don't know, I'm not trying to be a pessimist, but it, it, I don't really think it's going to be over. It's going to, we're going to get it under control. We're, you know, we're, we're going to learn to live It'll with it. It'll be over like the normal. flu is over. Correct. <laughs> you know, It'll be something that we do have to, to deal with. To deal with. And so I think you're absolutely right, as we can try to, the, the more we can do for our baseline immunity and our body so that our body isn't having to fight off all these chronic diseases and inflammation and then also have to fight off COVID, like that's going to put us just in, I think, a better overall stance. Not saying that you still may not catch it, but if you are, you know, faced with it, hopefully your immune system will be such that it can help to, to fight yeah. it off. So, um, right. you know, that's, that's the whole. A healthy so. immune system will definitely make a lot of difference, I think. Yes. I think so too. So, well, you have a good night and thanks everybody Thank for tuning in and I will talk to you later. Thanks for having me. Good night. All right. Good night. Bye. Bye.